Hi, everybody. Tim Hughes here. I'm the uh, co-founder of Digital Leadership Associates. I'm also the author of the book, Social Selling Techniques to Influence Buyers and Changemakers. Um, from the other side of the world, I have Ross Keating with me. Um, you're in where in Australia, Ross? I'm just south of Brisbane in Queensland, Australia. So I'm in the okay. northern east coast and I'm a place okay. called Gold Coast. I have about half a million people here. Right. So um, uh, there is, I, I noticed I did an interview with some people from Australia and there's just a slight second, half a second delay between the, the two, but it's it's okay. Before we get started, Ross, and we talk about your five steps to increasing, and what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll go through, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll read out the five of them and then we'll, we'll go through with them in, in one by one. Just so everybody knows, where can people find you? What's your LinkedIn and Twitter and? Right. Tim, I'm the client orchardist, and you easily on LinkedIn, and you can find me on Twitter, and you can find me on Facebook under my business page is Ross Keating, the client orchardist, and they are the, and I'm on Instagram as well under Ross Keating. So if you find look at those, I feel I've got a fairly good uh, profile. If you type in Ross Keating into the search there, I should appear somewhere on page one under that name. Don't confuse me with the guy in Canada. <laughs> Okay, yeah, I have a there's a there's a Tim Hughes who's a um, uh, a Christian country singer. So um, and and so ho hopefully I'm not. Well, I, I don't. It, we we kind of we, we're not really doing the same thing, but I can understand. So so let me read out your your five steps to increasing sales, and then we'll we'll. So number one is getting more customers to come back each year. That's number right. two is getting more prospects. Number mm -hmm. three is converting more prospects into customers. Number four, four is increasing the average transaction value per customer. And number mm -hmm. five is increasing the number of transactions per customer. And and probably the people that are watching this, and you put a very a great comment after that, which is these are nothing startling. And 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 I agree with you, Ross, because they're nothing startling, but what if what if we can go through one to five and, and you enlighten us about, um, you know, we, that, that's that's good sales and marketing. But what what what's your take on this and what's your insight on this? So number one is getting more customers to come back each year. What What's your view on this, Ross? The reason why that's important is that you spent so much money trying to get them. I and mean, when I've been looking at customers and businesses that my clients and it often comes back to how many clients have they got and they've got the database and over time it's got to be quite large and you normally sort of think well i've been in business this number of years and every year i have more customers and so the numbers go up and then the revenue should go up because each customer is buying but so many of them don't and they forget that that database is there and it opens up the door so that people, who are your customers what do they look like and who are they? And are they all customers? I mean, I say that there are three types of customers. There's an existing customer, um, and that's pretty straightforward. Then you have the lapsed customer, and I'm taking that terminology from the financial services, and that means they buy, they've stopped buying within the normal cycle of their purchases. Uh, so you, you, that somebody may have a three monthly buy cycle of that category or group of people then you have then they don't buy so they might be buying in and you want them to buy again and you've got a better chance of getting to them while you know them quite quickly then you've got the place where you have got it from a they're a past customer they've stopped buying from you for whatever reason and those are the things and you've got to remember 20 percent of the people will leave your business for whatever reason in any given year on average that's the stats the bigger the company the more likely those stats to be true because a small business is quite flexible then you've got 90 percent of people who do leave don't tell you it's only 10 percent of people one in ten are going to tell you that you're leaving and then the other statistic of that one is 67 percent of people who do leave do it for perceived indifference i say that they haven't been shown the love you've got to show customers the love so that's why knowing how many customers you've got or you think you've got and then trying to break them down in those different types of categories so 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 so, so, let, so, so let me go through that so in terms of in terms of 
in um, in terms of getting more customers, what you're looking to do is actually segmenting the customers that you have and looking at the ones and, and because you're quite right, there are people that you're dealing with because they've got budget, they've got a need. There are people that you dealt with who had a budget and a need, but they may have a need in the future. Um, and there are people that, um, you know, the, the need may have gone around, but, you know, it, you know, it, it can quite often come back. And um, and I think sometimes, yeah, organizations spend too much time on on new business and getting and getting uh, new customers rather than getting looking at the old ones. Is there something that you're doing that you're where you're working with people to actually get them to understand and segment and then do different things for those different three categories? Definitely. And that's where the first thing, one of the first things I do is to take it back a step is to sort of say, well, what sales are those producing? What revenue does that customer base provide you? And then what do you want that customer base, customer base to provide you? Because if you don't know what you want, how on earth are you going to achieve it? If, and you've got to know where you're coming from because then you can chunk it down and make it less frightening. But I always get that and I try to get them to get their customers list. Often it's just an accounting system, but the bigger companies, obviously, though, maybe a bit more switched on and they do have a CRM, a customer relationship management system. But so often they don't or it's fragmented. So people are still working with their personal spreadsheets and other things. And so it's trying to get them and bring a list together and then going in, you've got to segment them. It's it's not easy. It's not simple. It's dirty work. Um, but if you don't do it, then all your marketing, because this saves money to you, all these five steps will save money. Because if you can get it right, you can spend the money more effectively. It'll be more effective. Advertising will work better because you understand the message that you're getting to. So that's one of the key reasons I try and get that list out as fast as possible. Give me a list of your customers. And they can be newsletters and all sorts of things. Because you want to break out the prospects from your existing customers too. So so when when you say segment them, what what do you mean? What is it? So so if if, if there's somebody here that's watching this and they're mm -hmm. and they're saying, Yeah, this is a really good idea, what do you mean by segment them? Well, one of the, the first ways is to try and understand who they really are. If you're dealing with, I deal with a lot with business, the business, but who are they? Are they husband and wife team? So they're male and female. Do they work in a, do they have a business that is uh, between one and 10 staff or is it between 10 and 30 staff? How many, um, what do they buy? How old are they? Because you have to target, the, if you're using advertisements of any kind, online or offline, uh, print or you know, text and, and, and anything, you've got to make it so it resonates because you're like, if you give me a rap song, you're not, doesn't quite gel with me, right? Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but if you give me something... It's, it's of, a good analogy, Ross, yeah. Yeah, so you've got to have that. So you've got to be able to break it down and communicate with them. And if you can get that, then you can figure out where they are. Where do they hang out? What do they read? What do they listen to? What radio stations, if you, radio advertising is important to you? And where, where do they hang out? Where are you going to have online marketing going? And which social media channel is going to work for you? Because if you, you know, the young under the millennials, for example, are more likely to be listening to Snapchat than they are to maybe live or LinkedIn, depending on the market, you know, if you're talking to consumer markets. So you've got to, if you don't understand who they are, just pretty get the basics out. Where are they located? What, you know, what the age is? What, how much do they buy from you? Always get your value of what they are and get it as close. You don't have to be accurate at the beginning. Get, it, get something out so you can work with it. Then you can refine it because if you spend too much time to get it exact, <laughs> you could be doing it all year. But get it down. Get so so you, what you're saying is getting a spreadsheet um uh, itemizing the people and, and, and breaking them down into certain sections and using say filters on that to say you could be using turnover or number of staff or that as a way of saying right for these for for the um for the small companies we're going to do this 
um, for the big companies, we're going to do this and, and and break those down. And and also you've got your three categories in terms of um, existing customers, um, customers that have um, passed customers and dead customers. And and what you're saying is that that's the way that you would segment. That's right. I segment them down into those groups, and you're going to segment them because some products will have a different demographic demographic than another one. You know, for example, uh, if you're selling machinery to, to businesses, you know, the smaller businesses are might likely to buy the smaller type of equipment, and the bigger businesses are going to buy the more expensive. So the sale process is going to be different. So you have to take these things out, but make it simple to begin with. Don't get too bogged down in the detail. Just draw it up on the whiteboard. And I can often or do that in, a, in an hour or so with the client as you walk, walk through that. There's a there's an old marketing saying uh, called uh, load, fire, aim. So rather mm -hmm. than um, um, load, aim, fire, it's um, load, fire, aim, which is, you know, actually to do something, as you said, quick and dirty, which is let's look at the data, let's make some quick decisions on it and let's do something not to think about it too much see what the reaction is and then come back and refine it it's something that we do i mean i'm i've been in social media for nearly nine years and i'm constantly experimenting let's try this let's post this that didn't work okay let's do this and and sometimes i come across things that um purely by accident where i suddenly find um i do something with a particular tweet and all of a sudden i get a bit bigger response um, so mm -hmm. I, I, I really understand, get that. So with your number two about getting more prospects, is that something similar or do you see it, or is that completely different? The prospects is you have to decide, are they going to be new, totally new customers? Because a new customer costs you, according to the research, you know, if I used the broad one came from the, the White House research and that came from other research around, no doubt. It's six times, six to seven times more costly to get a new customer, you're going to convert a prospect into there. And an existing customer is 60 to 70 percent more likely or probable to buy your service than a new prospect is. So you want to, if you've got a sales team, for example, who are you going to, which one do your sales team are going to have to be more effective with are those existing customers? Because you don't have, because you want to increase the revenue. So if you can sell more, either more product or you can upgrade them to other things or create a package whatever you've got a better chance of selling it to your existing customers because they know like and trust you i mean there's a lady absolutely down here. And, in, and in terms of getting more prospects if you sat down and you've done that difficult work in terms of segmentation you've got your spreadsheet you know who your customers are um and you're looking at different filters in terms of well you know we're doing well in the um, in the in the tourist industry or the electronics industry, um, and maybe we're saying right, we we need to approach those industries different. In terms of getting more prospects, um, then you're you're probably getting areas that you probably need to focus more on because what you could do if you say I've sold to somebody within the tourism tourism industry, you have you should have tourism knowledge or a tourism understanding of that particular vertical therefore you could take that proposition and roll that out, out across the whole of the tourism industry couldn't you that's right you can uh, and it's it makes life easier to replicate things change it slightly for a segment within the tourism industry you know hospitality will be different from uh operators within the tourism industry so th those that having that vertical but so you've got to understand is a prospect a new prospect or is an existing customer i say that a prospect is it becomes a customer but a customer is always but always a prospect that's one of my living guidelines when i'm working with a business go and get them because yeah. if you've got a six hundred dollars you can get six hundred dollars to get a new customer or a hundred dollars to convert an existing customer which money would you prefer to spend and I and I and I, you you said that you, you said that in a number of times to me about and I think it's it's important, isn't it, that we the way that we treat people um, and treat our customers is the the assumption that they can actually walk away because most people can, um, mm -hmm. 
and um, um, and you know your your competition is only one click away, um, and it is very easy to walk away from 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 things. So you do need to keep. You know, we spend a lot of time and effort um, hugging our prospects and getting them to be customers, and then we see as soon as they sign on the dotted line, we kind of we forget all that hugging and all the looking after, and we need to be doing that. Uh, as a, for us as an organization, the, the driver is about quality. It's about making sure our customers are get, seeing something. It's not that that's the most important thing that we have. And we, we all of our, all, everybody in our organization knows that. Um, and I think it's, it's a really important lesson that we all learn. And we, and, and I know it's kind of sales and marketing um, 101, but in a way we kind of need to be getting up every day and cleaning our teeth and saying, and, and kind of saying it because, um, it's so important we forget about it. The, you're so, right, yeah. so, so in terms of when when we've moved from getting more customers to getting more prospects, I can see what you're saying, which is that there is a lot of value in going back to our customers. And in a way, what we're doing is that the, the, the segue from number one to number two works really nicely because in a, fa in a way what we're doing is we're treating our customers like prospects. And there's a That's great right. value in upselling and, and cross-selling and probably more value than that we actually really think. Is there anything else in terms of number two about getting more prospects that you think that, that, that you could share with us? It's more that this enables you to target the marketing because you can target the marketing to new customers and you have different target marketing to your existing customers. So you can be better at it to provide it more effectively and make it resonate more and also build, use your relationship to get that through showing them the love. And sometimes it's, you still got to go through the sales cycle. You've got to understand what your sales cycle is to be able to do that. For a new customer, it's going to be longer than it's for an existing customer. So from that perspective, understanding that, and that can affects the conversion factor because the conversion factor is not something that jumps up. But getting those new customers, converting those sales prospects of, at all is all about the conversion and if you build the trust with them in that and use your relationships that you've built through social selling and and online marketing and your sales reps then you can convert those sales more easily and it's amazing where training you know what training does your staff need who and upskilling a lot of businesses where they have inside sales team and people dealing with customers getting them to talk about have you thought about this to the customer, particularly call center staff? They're a bit more tuned to it these days, and banks take it to the nth degree. Uh, but a lot of businesses don't do that. And I would really suggest that they look at how they convert. And it's amazing. A 1% or 2% change in conversion rate can make a huge difference to the revenue yeah. and profitability. So number three of yours is converting more prospects to customers. And I agree with you. There's lots of things that we could be looking at in terms of referrals, for example, I was at a meeting. I, I met a, um, uh, somebody yesterday, and um, they'd actually been referred to me. And and you know, we sort of said, "So, what do you think?" He says, "Well, I've been been told that you that me and my um, co-founder, he said that you're both amazing at, at social media. So we're already in a situation where, um, in a way, what we were doing, he had a business need. He'd actually been told that we were amazing. So in a way, what we were doing is that we were." kind of pushing against an open door it because he was sitting in front of us we kind of knew that he wanted to, to to buy and we were able to close him at that that first meeting which is usually kind of unheard of certainly in the b2b area um and and, and i think sometimes people forget that if they go back to their customers they segment it they go back to them they can actually go back to them and get referrals um now if you go to someone and say ross will you give me a referral and you say well actually no then fine. But if you say, will you give me a phone and go, yes, it's one of the best ways of actually getting more prospects is getting your existing customer said, I think you did a great job. Yeah, we had these one or two issues, but you sorted them out for me. And that's what I want to know. You know, that, that's what I want from some, a supplier. Um, and you're, it's amazing actually how referrals will allow you to convert more of your, you get more customers by going back to your customers and getting to refer. Would you agree with that, Ross? Definitely. Yeah, the referrals, if you can get the referrals and talk to them, that's that's like easy sales. That's, you know, you, you should be able to walk out of there with the, the sale, depending on how it's done and you've got to, ha you've got to handle it. But again, you've got to have a 
Um, that, and that, you know, that leads to the number of transactions in a, in a business. If you can get that, how can you get more transactions out of those customers by referrals? Because they may refer you back because a, a customer that will do one and say, I've been using this and say, well, have you thought about talking to this customer? We know that you're, they're a customer of yours. Have you thought about showing them that one? Uh, and getting the referral and, and the testimonial really makes a difference in getting additional transactions. Some businesses, you can't get additional transactions. So so in terms of four and five, which is increasing the, the, the transaction for, per customer and increasing the number of transactions per customer, what, what's your advice on people? If they've, they've segmented their customers, how is it that they, 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 they do this? Is this a greater segmentation or... But what, what, what's your advice on this, Ross? To, by using the segmentation, you can identify whether they can get either other, other products and services from you. Can you create a package where they get some added value, add something? Can you use something from someone else? Sorry, I need caffeine. Uh, joint venture partner to, to sell and add something to your package. So they'll buy it again because they get this added value. That's how you can do that. But in some businesses, they won't, they can't do it. So how do you increase the transaction value? And again, that's from packaging. That's from um, also adding additional sales. Work on that additional sales. So many people don't try and add another sale. Have you thought about this? It's Maccas to the nth degree. <laughs> uh, and But so many businesses don't do that. Have you thought about this? And it makes a huge difference uh, in that. I think sometimes um, one of the things that we also forget is actually turning referrals on its head. You know, I, I um, all of my customers, I know what they do. And if I go into a situation where I'm with somebody else and I think, actually, this would make a really good, um, you know, you, you should actually be talking to this organization, which is one of my customers, then I will actually introduce them. And actually, that crop that that's, you know, people will be amazed at if, if you start doing that. Um, but I, there's, you know, I, I want my customers to be successful. Um, and 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 because if they're successful, they make more money. They're likely to, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, there's a there's a reason why I want them to, to be successful. Um, so, um, um, you know, I, that, that's something else that I generally add into the mix. But also, I, I agree with you that there's you could look at that segmentation and go, well, the, um, um, you know, uh, that that organization is very similar to that organization. They bought product X, but they haven't bought product X. So you could actually start. That's where you start refining and making and looking more granular in terms of that segmentation. That's right. Uh, making it granular because one of the things, if you if you can go down to it, you can go back to those customers that you might not have thought could do that. You might be able to come up with new products for them or new services. Um, one of the things I'd like to say about the longer a customer is with you, particularly if you're the service they get from you is very similar year after year. Accountants are a prime example of that. Uh, the people come back, they find is that the price goes up over time. And what I found in the number of businesses and industries where around about the five to seven year mark, those customers become dissatisfied. They get really good service, but all they start beginning to see is the price is going up. And they think, well, I'm not getting any more value. I'm still getting what I got for X price. So that's where your customers and showing them the love and by adding some other forms of value to them will keep them coming back. So be aware that your most loyal customers can be the ones that are most at risk, particularly if they don't buy a lot and the, the services similar time in and time out. That Ross has been um, really insightful. Thank you very much. Um, it, it's 25 minutes. It goes very quickly. Uh, r remind us again where people can find you, your Instagram and your LinkedIn and your Twitter. So they can find me on LinkedIn. They can find me on Twitter and Facebook, and they can find me on Instagram. It's 
<laughs> you are very active on social, Ross. People will find you. I can I, I can assure them. And and I don't know any other Ross Keating, so you, you you are unique in this in this in this world. Ross, thank you very much for uh, your time today, um, and um, and hopefully see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Ross. Thank you.